Hi, this is Mr. Max. So today I'm doing two questions. One involves a graph, straight line graph and a curve, as you can see. And then there are some uh, points that are labeled, point A here, point B, where the line and the curve cuts the y axis. Then you have also here point or the negative one, which is one of the roots, the solutions of the quadratic equation. So you have essentially two functions f, which is the quadratic function, and function g, which is the straight line function. Right, so they want us to calculate the coordinates of point A. All right, and then after that, they say now you must determine the equation of the straight line through points A and B. And then question two, you're supposed to find the value of P for which the line y plus px is equal to 12, this line here, it's a straight line. This line is a tangent to the curve, x squared plus xy equals to 12. Now, whenever you are solving those questions, remember you're not solving the value of the quadratic equation. We are not looking for the answer for the quadratic equation or the roots, but we're looking for a p-value here. And you can also see that both these functions are equal to 12, which means they are actually equal to each other. So what you can do also when you are dealing with this is you should remember the nature of the rules when you are given a combination of a straight line and a curve. The discriminant comes into play. So I suppose you have uh, tried those questions on your own. So we are, I'm going to use two methods here to find the coordinates of point A. All right. One of the methods that uh, it's probably not in your syllabus, but it's worth knowing is that when you take the sum of the roots of a quadratic equation, that means this negative one here, plus whatever this value will be here, it should give you minus b over 2a, which you can take from your quadratic equation. So remember, this here is a root. So the solution is where the function cut the x axis. This is the line y equals to zero. So that is a solution. It's a root. And the other one that we're going to find is point A. So in this case, we don't know the coordinates of point. The x coordinate we don't know, but we know that the y coordinate is zero because it is definitely on the x axis. So in order for us to find the x coordinate, which also ultimately will be the root, we can use the fact that we take the function 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, and we identify what our value of A is and our value of P, like so. And I'm going to say that this x here, maybe I'll say that is an x sub 2 or x sub 1, x sub 2 plus this one here, the sum of the roots should give you minus P over 5. All right, so I have negative 1 there, so I'm looking for the other one. And I let it equal to negative 5 over 2 because the value of B is 5 and the value of 2 is A. From here, you simply just solve this equation. You should get that x is negative 3 half or negative 1.5. So this is here now is the point negative 1.5 comma 0. Well, if you're not familiar with this method, then you can also use the method where you are solving the quadratic equation at it equal to 0, 2x squared plus 5x plus 3 equals to 0. And it does factorize, okay, two numbers multiply give you 6, and, that, and if you add them, give you 5. And when you factorize, you get 2x plus 3, x plus 1 equals to 0. So you let them equal to 0 each of them and then you realize you get x equals to negative 3 halves which is the same as what we got in our previous instance and obviously we know x equals to negative 1 already from the graph there. So what method you are using as long as you solve that particular point that is needed. Right then there is a b part to the question where they now want us to determine the equation of the straight line through a and b. Now you see I have brought in this point here, or the root here is negative 1 comma 5 for x and negative 1 here. And that is the point 3, but that point here if you write it as a coordinate it becomes uh, the point 0 comma 3 because y is equal to 0 there. So we know that the straight line is in the form y equals mx plus c, but you can also see that the straight line cuts the y-axis at 3, so therefore uh, our value of c becomes positive 3, which is basically the y-intercept. So the only thing left for us to do is to calculate the gradient. Now, I can use the point negative 1, 5, 0 
I'll use this point here and substitute it here for x and for y in order for me to find the gradient. Okay, take note, I can't use the point 0, 0,3 because although it's on the line, if I use the point 0, 0,3, it will just clean everything and say 3 equals to 3 if I substitute for x and for y because I'm looking for the gradient here. All right, so once you go through this and you clean it up, you get negative 1.5 equals to m, which then negative 1.5m, brother, is equal to negative 3. So you then divide throughout by negative 1.5. You should get that the gradient is equal to 2. And since the gradient is equal to 2, now we can complete this equation of the straight line is y equals to 2x plus 3. Ultimately, you can also have used uh, the formula to find the gradient of line AB. So perhaps you could have used the point negative 1.5 comma 0 and this point here at B which is 0 comma 3 and then you use delta Y delta X. Now you realize I'm starting from point B and if I start with the Y value of point B I should also start with the X value of point B. It should give me a gradient of 2. Even if you take it the other way around you start with the Y value of point A and you substitute that with the y value of point obviously b and you start also because you started with the y value of point a you must start with the x value of point a right it doesn't really matter which one you use between the two you also realize the gradient is two which is what we got here in the other case so the equation therefore is y equals to 2x plus 3 of that straight line through points a and b Right, then we have question two here. You are supposed to find the value of P. Remember here I said it has some steps that you need to show. So first of all, let me bring in a parabola here. When you have a quadratic function and you have a line that is a tangent, it just touches it anywhere on the graph, then the discriminant will equal to zero. Okay, there are instances where we are not talking about a tangent. There are instances where we talk about two distinct points. Then if you have that, then the, the discriminant will be greater than zero. If the two don't meet at all, then obviously the discriminant will be less than zero. So please revise that. It's also work that you can, that you can see in previous videos. So whatever we're going to do here is we ultimately will use the discriminant and it's going to equal to zero because as I indicated here, that the line is a tangent to that curve. Right, so first thing is I'm going to make the y value here the subject of the formula. That means y plus px equals to 12. It's easier for you to make that one the subject of the formula. I'm talking here in terms of the uh, straight line function. And then you're going to substitute that value that you got here, the 12 minus px, into the second equation, into the curve. And once we do that, and then you clean this up, you get x squared plus 12x minus px squared equals to 12. So the idea is to let everything equal to 0. And you see that I've highlighted the coefficients of the square term. It's going to come in handy when I do the discriminant. And we know that the discriminant should equal to 0. So that means b squared, which in this case is 12, minus 4ac. And the value of a is 1 minus p, as I indicated here. And the value of c is negative 12. So from here on, it becomes a normal straight line, uh, normal equation in one unknown that you should be able to solve. And I eventually end up with minus 3, which 1 minus p equals to minus 3. Remember, we're looking for the value of p. And you should ultimately arrive at p equals to 4. So whatever method you are using here, whatever steps you are taking, whether you're multiplying the 48 over, whatever you are doing, you should definitely get to the same answer. And take note, 48 positive comes from negative 4 here times negative 12. Okay? So find a way to have your algebra to be sound here so you don't make mistakes.